Hey there folks, this is GreenyXI welcoming you right back to Let's Play Ghost Trick. This is episode 17. In the last episode, we got Lynn and Camilla out of the sub. And Jowd and Cecil... Cecil... <laughs> went wandering off... Off the sub. Uh, somewhere else. They, they buggered off somewhere else. And I, I assume we're going to try and catch up with them in chapter 17. We're coming up towards the end now. Like, there are only two chapters left. This one and I think this one called, like, the final chapter... Something along those lines. Five, did it just say 5.10am? Oh shit. The appended submarine continues to sink, slowly but surely. A long, long journey to the bottom of the sea. Oh yeah, they got saved, saved by the mechanical arm, didn't they? <laughs> Lynn and the little lady found the darkness and the salt water closing in on them. But at the very last second, something saved them. Now it looks down at them quietly. My head is filled with one giant question. What in the world is this thing? Who is it? It was made up of different bits of junk. Creative. Oh, and he's going to use... He's going to use all the junk to be a person to talk to. Hmm. <laughs> I see you managed to survive, detective. Hey, yo. Sissel's back. Excuse my appearance, I seem to have lost my body. <laughs> yeah, creative. I, I'm impressed. Oh, and you there. You're the ghost who's been saving Lynn all evening, aren't you? You knew about me all along? Of course. What else could explain all those unnatural things happening? If you knew, how come you didn't do anything about it all this time? And how come you decided to save us all of a sudden? I thought you wanted to get revenge on us. I don't really know. Please, you got to tell me. I need to know. Here we go. This our true form for now. <laughs> true form. Who in the world are you? Cecil, look at you. What happened? I can't hold on to that image of myself any longer. You can't remember who you are? That's right. I came all this way tonight, trying to chase down my lost memory. For quite a bit of tonight. I thought it was you, Sissel. Sissel? My name isn't Sissel. I bet you'll remember really soon who you are and who I am too. What? His name's not Sissel. The man in front of me is not me. I'm even further away from the truth. Or maybe not. Something is stirring in my mind. A memory about to emerge. Do I know this man? Now that I've shared my image of myself, I feel like I'm one step closer to the truth. Sort of. Just don't know who you are. <laughs> Where are they two now, anyway? Like, outside the room. They got us good. It's all over for the submarine. Its engine room is destroyed. There's a hole in the hull, and it's sinking as we speak. What are you doing here? I thought I had a deal with those people. They betrayed me. I was a fool to trust them. They already have what they wanted now. The Temsic Fragment. I didn't know what... Uh, they had it all figured out. You mean, they figured out the source of your powers? Yeah, that meteorite's radiation has two effects on living creatures. It gives power and time. If you don't mind, we'd like to hear more. Uh, radiation's power effect. Okay, we'll go with that first. These ten years, I've been watching that junkyard superintendent do his research. I think I've kind of got some of it figured out. The meteorite's radiation power, or radiation, gives spirits special powers, like possessing and manipulating objects, and in my case, swapping objects. Exactly. Apparently, there are individual differences in the powers we get, and it seems these powers change as time goes by. They do? Yeah, my powers have changed over these past 10 years. At first, I could only manipulate small living creatures. Now then, how do you suppose we got these powers? It's simple. It is how then? In a nutshell, we died while exposed to the energy emitted by the meteorite. It's radiation. That's what does it? Dying while being exposed to the radiation? On that day ten years ago. Meteor came down. So does that mean Jow does something? A fragment of that meteorite pierced my heart and I died. 
So of course, I received special powers. Wait a minute. Is that how I got my powers too? You know, you might be right. Oop. <laughs> oh. And he died near the meteor that was underground, but eh? Okay, that makes sense. Aren't the Thamesic remnants still right there in that park? At the bottom of the crater? You're right. So that must mean I must have died in the presence of the meteorite's radiation too. Okay, so he must have been there at some point. The radiation's time effect. Another effect the meteorite's radiation has on us is that it gives us time. Again, I think this time effect is centered around the theme of death, but it's not all that clear. So the fact that I can return to four minutes before a person's death is another effect of that meteorite. One of the characteristics of that meteorite is its ability to replay the moment of death. Replay the moment of death? Uh, this is all so strange and confusing. I can't take it all in. It makes about as much sense to me as anything else. Yeah, strange and confusing. That just about sums up the object that pierced my body that day. Thanks to that meteorite fragment, my very existence is a contradiction. What do you mean? Let's check the, that one out. It's a contradictory existence. That day, when the fragment pierced my heart, I lost my life. However, because it remained inside of me, that fragment continued to constantly regenerate my body. In other words, my body was continuously cycling between the moments that separated my life from death. What? My body's vital functions stopped 10 years ago, but my body's time is perpetually stopped at the moment just before death. Time just stopped, huh? So I just simply existed. Not really alive, not really dead. That pretty much sums up these last 10 years for me, ever since that incident in the park. My body hasn't aged a day. My hair hasn't grown an inch. Come to think of it, that old pigeon guy mentioned something. He said he couldn't cut this guy's body with a scalpel. So I guess, as soon as an incision was made, his body would be regenerated. Wow. And revenge. Before I left this country, I wanted to do one thing. I wanted to get revenge on the people who stole our lives. Our lives? As part of the deal, I made those guys promise to cooperate. Cooperate? You mean the kidnapping? It all went fine. I manipulated the justice minister and made him issue the execution order. But I thought he might call off the execution at the last second. So that's why he wanted his daughter kidnapped. But they kidnapped the wrong girl. Little did I know, they had their own reasons for cooperating with me. Hm. The objective was to wipe out everybody who had to do with Temsek. Detective Jowd was one such person, so they were happy to cooperate. Inspector Cabanilla and that junkyard super, they were slated to be wiped out too. Did that pigeon guy ever get a proper name? I don't think he did. And as it turns out... I was one of their targets as well. So they stole my Temsic fragment, and here I am. Stole a fragment, but... Hmm. Does that mean he's dead in the morning? But they had one more final target. You, detective. Me? Yeah, you. One final target, because she was there at Temsic. If you weren't there in the park that day, ten years ago, I never would have thought of doing something as stupid as taking a hostage. Okay. But I was just a little kid playing in the park. Yeah, I know. Huh? Ten years later and you'd become a detective, looking into Jowd's case. Tonight, I invited you to a quiet spot on the edge of town. It was a trap, you see. I told you who I was. You never saw my face that day ten years ago, so of course you didn't recognise me. There we go, there's the manipulation coming. I took possession of you to make you shoot me. Your subconscious resisted me. Such incredible power. 
It was the first time I wasn't able to control somebody completely. The aim was off and the first shot missed the mark. Whoop, there we go. Supposedly dead. For the camera. <laughs> Say cheese. The junkyard was equipped with security cameras. I knew he'd be wanted for murder. That was my plan anyway. Uh -oh. But they had other ideas. They simply wanted you wiped out. But then, something threw a big monkey wrench into their scheme. Us. I showed up. I was supposed to meet up with them after that, but then something went wrong. What happened? My body disappeared. Ah, the inspector in white was responsible for that one. My precious bargaining chip was in that body. I had to get it back no matter what. That inspector caused me no end of trouble. But why were those people targeting me? I never even heard of the Temsic meteorite. Because you were looking into the Jout case. They thought you would find out about Temsic sooner or later. Okay, that seems to be all the options. That's a heavy story part. The game has got a lot more story. Uh, I suppose the whole game has been story heavy. But the last few chapters they've been... Um, a lot of the story. <laughs> That's pretty much the whole story. The only thing left to do now is wait for water pressure to crush the submarine. Oh no. There are no cores that link from here to the water surface. I have an idea. We hook up the phone line and... There are no communication cables down this deep. They meant for the submarine to be my coffin. A coffin for the dead. There's no escape. I think I kind of understand now. What you've been feeling these ten years. You what? This feeling, cut off from the world, all alone in a submarine. Sinking slowly towards the bottom of an endless sea. This must be how you felt all along. Empathising with the... <laughs> the bad ghost. Lynn? Camilla. Is it true we're stuck here? What? Uh, oh, uh... Better get comfy. <laughs> if my dad... If my dad was here, I bet he'd save us. <laughs> Pull in. <laughs> oh, Camilla, I'm so sorry. Hmm, that's funny. What is it, Sissel? There's something I don't understand. Why would they go to all the trouble of detaching the control room? Huh? Why didn't they just steal the Thamesic fragment and escape? If that's what they wanted. Why did they have to jet on your body off into the sea? Hmm, that's a good question. But I guess it doesn't matter why now. We'll never find it again. We have no idea where it was launched to. Wait a minute. Yes, we do. This will tell us where Detective Jowd is. That present from the inspector in white. That's right. Detective Jowd told me to hold on to it for him. And the bullet's still in this person's body in the command room, right? Then we should be able to tell exactly where it is with this. But even if we find out where it is, how do we get there? We should be able to figure something out between the three of us with our powers. Right, Miss Lynn? Right. And wait a minute. What about a torpedo? Torpedo? In any case, it's way too early to give up. Mm, looks like Detective Jowd is our last hope. Come on, let's get started. Okay. <laughs> What can we do? What can we do? If we just... We can't open the door, obviously. That's not going to do anything. Better not open this. That water would come gushing in, I bet. Such a peaceful mood at the moment. No one, no one needs to throw cold water on it. Won't go so far as to call it peaceful. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> the opposite, really. Uh, let's try out control panel. Looks like a microwave. <gasps> it's out to get more grapes. Okay. Let's just get up here, so that's something. Try the phone. Torpedo room? She said about torpedoes. Torpedo room, huh? There might be another torpedo left there. I'll go check it out. Oh, I get it. You're going to use a missile to ram the control room. I don't know about ram. We don't want to blow Detective Jowd up, but something like that. 
We'll climb up to the torpedo room too. Up is definitely safer. Okay, I'll see you there then. Right. Looks like the torpedoes can be launched manually with these switches. There are two tubes, so there should be one more left. Guess the first thing we have to do is load it into the tube. When it comes to missiles, you can count on me. <laughs> Just because it's your name. I'll enter the coordinates of the command room into the torpedo. It's like having the name Cloud from Final Fantasy VII. Definitely depressive enough. <laughs> to rain. <laughs> and I just turned on the backup power. We ought to be able to use the switches now. Okay, let's try it. Good luck. Right, what exactly, or how exactly? Lower? Switch won't bub, bud, bub. <laughs> Budge, maybe it's broken. But I don't think the entire device is broken though. It would probably work just fine if only I could move the switch. Okay, okay, that's easy enough. I think I get it. I think I get it. Ah, oh, okay, I gotta talk to him first, alright. What happened to these two ladies? I think that's up to us and our powers. What? This is no time to be standing around and sure of ourselves. Will you lend me your strength missile? Yeah, of course I will. Count on it. Okay. So, ah, oh, now I can. Yeah, I thought that would be how I needed to switch. Needed to talk to him first. Let's see what it does. Do we need to open our lid next? There we go. That torpedo looks serviceable. All set on this end too. Something's odd. What is? The command room. It looks like it's slowly sinking. Sinking? Looks like it's completely run out of power. Wonder what happened? I don't know, but I guess I'll find out. Okay, hop into the missile. I'll launch it for you. Okay, thanks. Thank you so much. I don't know where I'm going, but... <laughs> I've already set the torpedo's course. It'll head toward the command room where Detective Jowd is. Okay. 12 seconds after launching, it'll pass by the command room for an instant. That instant will be your window of opportunity to jump over to the command room. Okay, got it. And then we'll find a way to come back and save you. That'll probably be my last task tonight. Just hold on until we get back. Hint, hint. Very close to the end. Okay, come on, missile. Missile? I, I'm sorry, I can't go. What? I just can't. How could I leave? I can't leave Miss Lynn and Miss Camilla behind. I can't do it. Missile. I swapped the switches so the missile can be launched. You'll have to do the vest, Cecil. Oh, doggy. I can't do it either. I can't ask Missile to come with me after that. I understand exactly how he feels. There's two cores. He's got to come. Two cores on the missile. I want you to go, Missile. What? But Miss Lynn. You staying here won't change our fate. But if you go with Cecil, you might be able to make something happen. That's our only hope. What if that something doesn't happen? I'll never be able to see you again. Never, ever again. Even I can understand that. I couldn't stand that. Don't worry, Missile. Miss Camilla? I just know you and Sissy can make something happen. I believe in you. I'll be right here waiting for you. We'll see each other then. Don't worry. Miss Camilla. He's coming. That's a good boy, Missile. He's even going in front. You ready? Remember, it's 12 seconds after I throw this switch. Do I have to remember the time and time it? We're ready. If I do, I, I, there's no chance. <laughs> Cecil? Yes? We never found out who you really were. But that doesn't matter now. All I know is I'm truly glad I met you tonight. Thank you for everything. And I'm glad I met you, Detective. But we're going to see each other again. Right, Sissy? Right, Missile? That's right. We promise, little lady. Shouldn't promise. Of course we will. I'll never forget you, no matter what happens. Here goes, then. Good luck, friend. I get Final Fantasy VIII vibes when you're going up in the rocket somehow. Not quite the same, but... <laughs> These 12 seconds are lasting an eternity. I strive to think of a way to save Lin and the little lady the whole time. But how can a ray of light, of hope, reach this far down into the deep sea? Before I can think of an answer, the 12 seconds are up. I like the animation for, for this part. 
Here we go. There we go. All automated. Probably for the best. Detective Jowd. I bet that big masked man did this. I'm gonna bite them. You better not. You might break your teeth. The command room has lost power and is sinking. So I wonder what this masked man is gonna do. Let's talk to Def Detective Jowd. Let's talk to the dead man. Hmm. Time to save him. So for the wait, Detective Jowd. Who are you? You, Sissel. Please excuse my appearance. Can't believe you made it here. How's Camilla? What about Lynn? Oh, it's kind of a long story. I told Detective Jowd about everything that happened on the submarine, you know. You know who? You know who? <laughs> so the submarine is badly damaged? Why would he do that to his own submarine? I wish I knew. I know the answer to that one. It's because he's afraid of my powers. You? You followed us? I didn't even notice. It's been ten long years, Detective Jowd. You? Yomiel? Yomiel? Yomoa? Yomiel? Do you remember me, do you? How could I possibly forget? So that's your real name, huh? Yomiel. That's right. But those people on the Yenoa were calling you Sissel. That's just an alias I was using for my deal with them. I didn't see any need to tell them my real name. Could you do me a favour? Would you let me ask you some questions? I've been trying to find out my true identity all night. Sure, go ahead. I'm sure there's plenty we can still tell you. Right, Detective Jowd? Right. About Yomiel. Okay, then. Ten years ago. You were a top systems engineer, weren't you? Systems engineer? What's that? By the way, I'm a top Pomer Pomeranian. Pomeranian! Jesus! You know. <laughs> it's kind of hard to explain to a dog, but it's a person who's good at using computers. I don't mean to brag, but I was one of the best in the industry. That's why I got roped into joining that project. Project? What project? It was a project aimed at reorganising the nation's top secret information. The goal was to build a new system using multi-dimensional programming theory. I was asked to join the project by an agent of the government. It doesn't sound like something a top Pomeranian would know anything about. To me, it just sounded like another challenging job. However, this project was also the target of a secret plot. I bet you can imagine the kind of crime the nation's top secrets might attract. I never thought for the life of me I'd ever have to deal with spies. It was never made public, but every organisation in the country moved on this one. And then, one day, the name of a certain programmer emerged as a suspect. I was the guy who built the core of the system. The police arrested you, and then, that incident happened. He escaped from the interrogation room, and took little Lynn as a hostage. By the way, Detective Jowd, when was it that I was proven innocent? About six months after your death. I'm so sorry, Yomiel. Okay, real motive for revenge. Ten years ago. The meteor? Eight? <laughs> my soul was split from my body and I lost everything. I was sealed in eternal darkness. I existed in this world. No question about that. Oh, this is good. It's automated text and everything. It's a nice little feature. Nobody noticed my presence. What good were my powers? They didn't help anybody. Not even the passage of time could heal my pain. In fact, it only made it worse. I wanted to disappear, but I wasn't even allowed to do that. The way Lynn described it is exactly right. Sinking slowly toward the bottom of an endless sea. An overwhelming feeling of loneliness and despair. I wanted all of you to suffer what I was suffering. And so that's why you murdered Alma. That's right. I wanted you to know what it was like to lose everything you cared about. I wanted you to feel the same pain I felt. What? It was the twisted wish of a mind poisoned by infinite loneliness. And then, as I was plotting my revenge, I had an idea. Came up with a plan to use these powers of mine to make a deal. Go on then, the deal. 
There's something I just don't understand about that deal. I'm sure your powers would be very valuable to them, but what would you get out of the deal? A new life. Life? I asked them for two conditions. Number one was that they helped me with my revenge plot, and the second was a rebirth for me. Rebirth? A new beginning, eh? I didn't care if it was a fake life, an artificial life. I just wanted a physical receptacle for my soul, a name, an identity, an everyday life. I wanted to grow old in a society that would accept me. And finally, I wanted to die, surrounded by a loving family. That's the kind of life I asked them for. A completely man-made life. That's right, I knew I couldn't hope for anything more than that. To make it all come true, I knew it would take a lot of money and a lot of power. That's why I decided to ask a national government to help me. And the response in the end was betrayal. Yeah, we've seen it, haven't we? They're making their moves such, uh, much more carefully than I suspected. They sent spies to this country and researched the, my powers on their own. Maybe I'm not thinking of the right betrayal. I'm thinking of what just happened not long ago. And they even figured out what Temsic was all about. And you had no idea they were doing all this? None at all. I was a fool. So then, why did they go to all the trouble of making a deal with you? Why didn't they just steal a hunk of the Temsic meteorite from the park? They couldn't. After the manipulator incidents, research was conducted in this country too. A report was submitted to the government about the source of the manipulator's power. By Inspector Cabanilla and the old pigeon guy, eh? At first the government didn't believe the report. But then they decided to put the park under surveillance just in case. Surveillance, huh? It just looks like an ordinary, peaceful park, but there are armed agents there at all times. Is he an armed agent? <laughs> Don't tell me that odd leaflet guy is one of them. No, not him. He's just a plain old odd person. <laughs> Definitely. That park is like a silent battlefield on an international scale. So that's why they couldn't steal a Tamsic meteorite. And lately, under the pretense of building a housing site, they've been working on a plan to destroy that park in order to secure the Thamesic meteorite. So that's it, eh? So the upshot of your grand deal was this, eh? It's the ending I deserve. But at least there's one thing you must be happy about. What's that? You've managed to seal me away at the bottom of the sea forever. Well, should we get started? Started with what? Bringing Detective Jode back to life, of course. What good will that do now? But we promised. We promised Miss Lynn and Miss Camilla we'd save them. We can't do that without you, Detective Jode. I've been guided by fate tonight to this place. I won't give up now. Alright, fine. Let's see where it leads us. Here we go then. Back to four minutes before your death. Okay. Right, let's, let's see how it all went down then. So, where are we headed? We're not headed anyway, Detective. What? There was only enough fuel on board to launch us away, Detective. We'll run out soon, and that'll be our destination, Detective. What are you talking about? That would mean... that you're trapped here too? Oh. <laughs> By the way, I'm not human, Detective. Yours did seem a bit odd. But don't they all? I'm a remote-controlled robot, Detective. What? The country's use of technology is just plain off. We get that a lot, Detective. Hmm. Why would you go to all the trouble to do this? That's nothing but a shell, eh? It's hardly a threat anymore. Commander Sith likes to provide against any possibility, no matter how small, Detective. Possibility? What are you talking about? There's no need for you to know, Detective. Oh shit. That's where his death is coming from. It's time to say goodbye, Detective. In the end, your fate remains the same, it seems, Detective. Grr. Murgur girl. <laughs> Camilla, forgive me. Oh. Everyone dies so much. All the main characters. It isn't over yet. It isn't? Remember what that big masked man said? Any possibility, no matter how small. 
possibility. In other words, there must be a chance here somewhere. The possibility of turning the situation around. Alright. What do we do? If we talk to the body? What is it, detective? Look at Yomiel's shell. There's no aura emanating from his body. Of course there isn't. Yeah, we got rid of the meteoroid. Or they did. The Tamsic fragment's gone. Could this change in the shell? Give us some kind of lead? Mm, let's go to it. I figured it out. I know what this possibility, no matter how small, is that they are afraid of. What is it? My time was perpetually stopped thanks to the power of Tamsic. His body cycled between the moments that separated his life and death. Right, but not anymore. The Temzik fragment has been taken away. Exactly. So what's that mean? I get it. Your body won't come back to life anymore. The moment the Temzik fragment was removed, my shell became a regular corpse. So let's see. That means we can go back, back to four minutes before your death? Wait a minute. Exactly when is that death? That's simple. We'll find out. When we get there, let's move. Okay, let's rewind for... Um, I can't quite think of his name. Sissel, should we carry on going with that? I fell back through the cracks of time for what seemed like forever, and then I saw it. The final death at the end of this long night. Who exactly am I? I've already seen all the clues. All I have to do now is remember. The final journey to the truth starts now. Oh! <laughs> that was a proper story chapter, wasn't it? So, I guess we're saving the bad guy, Sissel. Oh my god, it's getting a bit... It's getting crazy. New song, four minutes before death variation. Take the new illustration. Oh, okay, I like that part. And I love his design. Yeah, a save. Okay, let's check out the songs then. Oh, wow. Definitely coming to the climax. We've got one chapter left. So if, if we have a look at the chat challenges, 20 out of 30. Might as well have a quick look at what I've missed. Cleared ghost trick. Okay, yeah, we're going to do that. 97% on something. Don't know. It's a mystery. <laughs> chapter 5. Avert fate without any deaths. Uh... After the final fate, chapter 9. Lead the way outside without failing. I can't remember what chapter 9 was. Um, was it when we we got the prisoner out, jailed out, for the first time? We got that one on chapter 10, somehow. Uh, yeah, there's plenty. A couple to do with the... Or one to do with the um, the puzzles, sliding puzzles that unlock after, which I probably won't be doing. I don't like sliding puzzles. Final chapter, failed by removing the large symbol. Don't know yet. And then there's a uh, platinum. It's like trophies, isn't it? How Nintendo gets around it sometimes. New illustrations. These couple. This loads for clearing ghost trick. You get loads of them. And then you get some, like the remainder of them, for completing those puzzles again. So they're worth doing if you like those illustrations. I never really look at them in games, but. Anyway, this has been Greeny XI. Hope you've enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again in a bit when we head on to the final chapter. See you in a bit, folks.